Rami here. Welcome back to Taylor Tales. We're here. Chapter 15, James Route. There is 12 more chapters left. I think he, his route's 27. The steel walls, the hard surface, the bed. I'm back inside the spaceship. The door is locked. I already tried stepping on the mechanism and it wouldn't budge. My clothes, the ones I wore when I was taken, they're left behind on the planet. I'm lucky enough to have my cell phone with me. Something they haven't taken away. Perhaps they never realized its significance. Time has gone a bit fuzzy with me. I don't know how long I spent in that cell. Weeks? Months? I've been so sick. I can barely put together my memories. There's one thing I do remember crystal clear. Lena. Billy's and Eok are all with the resistance. The rebels. Lena's especially seem to be very important but i couldn't tell anyone not only was i sick but even billy has warned me not to say anything i'm an outsider i shouldn't care but i feel very deceived it's not that they're rebels i honestly do not care but i liked eok i was fond of him to find out it was most likely an act all this time i don't know why it bothers me so much you have a right to feel bothered that is just straight up savagery of what he did he tricked us he tricked us all the whole time. I thought I had a friend. <sighs> I have no friend. The door to my room opens up. My eyes instantly lock onto the entrance. Hello, sir. It's just a soldier I don't recognize carrying a tray of food. Eat, he says, placing on the floor. Wait, I tell him as I see him getting ready to leave. Where's Eok? Did he come too? I need to speak with him. The soldier looks annoyed. What do you want with a grunt? He huffs. If only you knew how much more he is than that. Tell him I want to talk to him. The soldier doesn't bother acknowledging me anymore and leaves the room. Exasperated, I eat the food he delivered. A day later, I get another visitor delivering food. But this time, I recognize them. Eok, I sit with an unintended amount of disdain behind it. Well, not excitement. I sit with excitement. He stands to the side, not looking me in the eye. He places the tray down on the floor. Eok talks to me. You have a lot of explaining to do, I assume. Eok clears his throat. Princess E, he says in his typical scraggly voice. Drop the act. I warned him, getting up from my bed. That day, what did I walk into? <sighs> Yoke's shoulders slumped in size. Nothing you should concern yourself with. His voice is clear and his grammar correct. What were you going to do with Prince Nornis? What happened to him? I fire off my questions. I don't know anything at all. Whatever happened after I was put into the cell is a mystery to me. Uh. The young prince is doing fine, he draws out, still avoiding my eyes. Uh. It is he who you should thank for still being alive. What do you mean? Captain James was the one that negotiated for my life, I point out. Eok shakes his head. That's a separate issue. The people I work with, they couldn't let you go. You and the prince knew too much. Then he finally does make eye contact with me. In return for his silence, we cut a deal to keep you alive. I feel my heart beat faster. They kept me alive, which means you're going to kill me. I stay in a small voice. Eok looks down on the floor. It's not my decision to make. I feel horrified. I think I had any amount of trust in him. You completely played me. Fooled me. I'm so disgusted. Making everyone think you're just some insignificant grunt. Speaking strangely, lowering down people's guards. I start to rant. I bet you giving me your moquette was also part of that plan. Just to lure me into some into a false sense of huh. I did not deceive you, princess. He cuts me off with a shrill voice. Uh. Princess, you were an animally. No one was prepared for it. Animally? I don't know. He explains with a <sighs> sigh. New plans had to be made, but my decision to give you my moquette was all part of my own violation uh. violation. And I hope the princess's own feelings were as genuine as mine when you gave me your own moquette. Yeah, I did, I did, until you deceived me. That's because I didn't know you were going to kill me back then, I yelled. Uh, I didn't want. I vouched for you, Eok graces his voice. Uh, princess Lena wasn't convinced until I suggested to deal with Prince Thornis. You're saying Princess Lena wanted me dead. Uh, There's a lot to unpack here, but Princess Michiko, I am on your side. She certainly isn't. What about her brother? Does Captain James know? I question him. James was the one who wanted to keep me alive. Even that bit he said at the end, right before getting flogged. A life for a life. That doesn't sound like someone who conspired to have killed me. Uh. Had me killed, sorry. Captain James is unaware of our involvement with the resistance. With how big of a lap dog Caleb seems, I doubt he knows either. Which means I know their dirty little secret. A secret people were willing to kill me over. And I really trust what Eo was saying. He vouched for me. It's hard to believe. But I do know I'm alive. I'm on a, on a ship filled with soldiers that are not friendly to rebels. If James knows New Eok belongs with the rebels, he'd def probably get spaced on the spot. Which means I hold all the cards. I can use this. If you don't want me spilling your secret to the captain, you're going to help me escape. Oh, what's preventing me from telling him everything? Yo, look, he 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 answered my questions. Just be kind with him. Ah. Absolutely nothing, Princess Michiko. He answers honestly. 
I'm actually quite surprised at his response. It's almost like he doesn't think I'll tell. Is it because you think I won't do it? <laughs> you chuckle slightly. Uh. It's because there's a much better plan, one that involves helping you get off the ship. What? I'm stupefied. Uh. Princess Michigo, I'm helping you escape. What? I repeat again, unable to say anything uh. else. Like I said before, you're an animal -y. animal -y? Uh. We have to improvise and change our plans. It suits us much more if the negotiations with H HX Oroi do not proceed as planned. Oh, just using me as a pawn. Uh, he uh, once more. I was the one who suggested the idea. He takes a step closer uh, to me. Everyone who has been wrongly taken prisoners deserves their freedom, especially someone with a kind heart like you. This time I close my mouth. I can't tell if he's serious or not. Am I just being used in his plan, or does he really want me to help? Want, want to help me uh, escape? You get to go back to your family, he says with a soft smile. Isn't that what you want? I desperately want to go back to my family, to get to live a normal life again. But what about you, I ask? This is not going to end well. Earth will be m much better prepared for the second round of invasions. The first time we were caught off guard, but I'm sure preparations have been made by the Forester Incorporation at least. You will get caught in the crossfire. That is alright with me. I pre I'm prepared to perish in a battle for what I believe in. And just like that, my sympathy returns in full force. If what he's saying is true, then he really does intend to die to give me back to my give me back my freedom. What exactly you're fighting for? I ask. He closes his eyes, his demeanor uh. changing. That's a very broad question. I think you owe it to me to explain. It doesn't seem like you want to attack Earth. Uh. You're right. I don't. The Resistance doesn't care about the intergalactic war of conquest. We have no intention of conquering your planet. But you're here. I point out on this ship, just like. Oh my god, just like the first time. He heaves a sigh. I slip through the ranks and act as a spy, so just don't pay attention to me, as I'm just a lowly grunt who can't even speak right. That much has been obvious that it's all been an act, as his kind has also been an act. You being friendly with me, was that just an act- was just acting as well, I asked sadly. Yeah. Yoke smiles. No, Princess Michiko has continually surprised me. I am enamored. Um. I hope what you said at the Maka was can still be true, that we are friends. Something inside of me melts at his words. Again, we're on the same side. Lord Veritas took over my planet, and he intends to do the same to yours. I thought you said he saved your planet. Yeah. Yes and no. It's complicated, but Lord Veritas arrived on planet Yule when I was very young and executed our ruling royal family. This only makes me wonder how old Eok is. What about Princess Lena? She wanted me down. Uh. It's nothing personal, he says. My life is very personal, I quickly react. Uh. Princess Michiko, you only need to know that the Resistance is actively working to fight against Lord Veritas and dethrone him. Princess Lena is on the forefront of that. You mean she's your leader? That is starting to make sense. Her frequent disappearances, the reason she had to wear a tracker, all those soldiers that were strange or respectful towards yeah. her. One of them, yes. And she's conspiring against her own brothers. Eok looks a little distraught. Uh. The reality is a lot more complicated, Princess. I can't. The door to the room opens up, starring both of us. Kayla walks in. It's the first time I've seen him on the spaceship. Mm. Princess Michiko, the captain wants to see uh. Eok will take the princess, Eok interjects, having easily switched to his mm. other persona. No, Captain James asked me. You, come. Caleb grabs my arm and pulls me along. I guess I won't get all the answers right away. Eok's eyes are fixated on me, filling with a mixture of worry and fear. I won't tell him, I reassure him in a small whisper as I pass to Eok. Ugh, I don't want to walk with you. I don't want to walk with anyone. I don't like anyone. <laughs> I don't like anyone here. It's a little stiff walking with Caleb like this. I don't have very fond memories of him the last time we interacted, which was when he was beating James to near pulp. He keeps quiet, strictly professional. I have to ask. Captain Caleb, I start, my voice betraying my hesitation. Why did you agree to punish Captain James? It's probably because he knew that Veritas would, like, make it worse. So he will do it less worse, in a way? I don't know. His eyes fall upon me, and it's and it's this unfamiliar case. Oh, do we? Okay, whatever. Nope opposite. I'll do whatever Lord Veritas commands me, he explains. Mm. Including taking over your planet if that's what it takes, he warns me. It doesn't seem like he would change his mind or loyalty to Veritas. He's a very devout follower if he has no issues being his own sibling just because his lord said so. I keep quiet for the rest of the way. Good. Nothing we can say will change that man's mind anyway. Once more I've arrived at James' room, I'm getting flashbacks of the time I tried to feel for his heart and heard that strange heartbeat. Hmm. James with the long hair makes him look so much softer. <laughs> Captain, I brought the princess, Caleb announces. Sitting at his desk, James, as usual, doesn't look up and merely gestures at Caleb to leave. There's not much love between them, is there? Caleb bows and leaves the room. It's still a little strange to see James with longer hair. Just how long was I locked up in that cell? 
I do not want to cut his hair. Please let me keep his hair like this. Jane stands up from his desk, walking over to the vaults behind him. He opens them, opens one of them and chooses a small vial. Is that the saffron root? I wouldn't need to take it anymore now that I'm in space, right? Healer Billy has wanted to make sure you could survive the trip and asked me to administer these to you. His voice is cold and unfamiliar. Ugh. Come here, he commands, noticing I've been idling by the entrance. Hesitantly, I walk towards him. What is it? I ask, seeing the vial. James takes out a syringe and sucks up the contents from the vial. Mm. Medicine, is the simple answer. Mm. Give me your arm. It's not a question as he grabs my left mm. arm. Caleb Billy has said you are still recovering from the rick rickety virus, and should continue to take a shot every three days until the end of the trip. I feel fine though, I mutter. But I guess I should trust what Billius knows about the un unknown alien virus. I'm just, I'm just happy I'm back to normal. I'd rather not have a dead princess on my ship when we arrive, he says, irritated. His fingers touch my arm, making me flinch unexpectedly. His eyebrows furrow as he detects something on my skin. Uh. What's this? He's referring to the fading mark on my arm, the ones I got from Caleb's whip. I had a stitch it myself. A wound, I reply in a simple manner. I have eyes, princess. What I mean is, where did this come from? Tell me. Captain's Caleb's whip, I answer. He is shooketh. He, oh, that's right, he doesn't know. I protected you. For kind of slightly. <laughs> James pauses, his eyes slightly widen, as if he doesn't quite understand. He twists my arm, inspecting it on all sides. The wound travels from my elbow to my uh -huh. wrist. How? I tried to shield you. I quickly cut him uh -huh. off. Shield me? He echoes incredulously. It seems a little awkward to admit. You're passed out. He was going to beat you to death. I couldn't. You couldn't what? I couldn't bear to watch him die in front of me. But I'm not about to say that to his face. What the fuck am I going to say then? Just give me the shot. Okay. <laughs> I say stubbornly. Jero, J Jero? J James narrows. I fuse the words together. James narrows his eyes. I can't. I can tell it bothers him that I tried to intervene with his punishment. I'm not in the mood for in intro introspection, though. Thankfully, he lets the issue go this time. He turns my arm until the eye inside faces him. Brown eyes are strained on my st strained on trying to find my veins until he pushes the needle into my skin. I squeeze my eyes shut for a second. I never like the sensation of getting a shot. Can't I do it myself? I ask once the liquid has filled my veins. This way I don't have to keep bothering you. Mm. No, he says quickly. His tone leaves no further discussion. He dabs a small cloth against the punctured wood from the syringe. Cleaning away a few drops of blood, he's surprisingly gentle with his actions. Mm. I'll personally see to it that your health is maintained. Because you can't present me when I'm damaged, right? I say flippantly. He certainly doesn't care about my actual being. James releases my arm, stirring with a syringe and mm. vial. That is correct. Negotiations will run smoother when they see you're alive and well. Sorry to break it to you, James, but there won't be any negotiations. Not only have I lied about being some kind of royalty with worth, Ioka's going to help me escape. Oh, we're just backstabbing everyone. Because we got backstabbed. I do not like this. I'm very sad. <laughs> this is not going to end well for him. If one lightning bolt from Kane sent him into an unconscious state, I doubt they can do much. He might actually die returning to Earth. That makes me pause. I feel like such a hypocrite. James is the entire reason why I'm in this predicament abroad aboard on an alien spaceship. But he did also bargain for my life with Veritas. I watched how he took that gruesome beating from me. It still eats me up inside. Because of that, there's part of me that doesn't want him killed. Punish him for his crimes, for sure. But want him dead after he saved my life feels wrong. So I have to ask. Why don't you give up and taking over Earth? What if the negotiations won't run smoothly? Um, let's do keep behind here. James raises his eyebrows at huh? me. Are you worried about your people, he asks. No, I'm worried about... I swallowed my tongue. I was about to say I was worried about him. That's not something I'm about to admit. I'm just saying, it's not looking good for you. You should consider peacefully surrendering me. In fact, maybe you can strike a deal where we could help one another, I suggest. Huh. James scoffs out mm -hmm. loud. What makes you think I would surrender our best bargaining chip? Surely you're smart enough to figure out that puts me at a disadvantage. You don't have to attack Earth just because Lord Baird is threatened to kill your sister, I point out. What if we could help you keep Princess Lena safe? Uh, James suddenly enters my personal space, growling down at me. Uh, Do not speak of things you have no knowledge of, he hisses at me. Remember your place. I shut my mouth but continue to stare at him. He's right, it's not my place. But if I could convince him not to attack, that would be the best course of action. James walks away from me and moves towards his desk, tapping uh, a button. Come take the princess and escort her back to her chambers, he voices out a command. Not a second later, a soldier walks into the room to take me away. 
Now that I met with Eok and got my medicine with James, I can't stop thinking about all the, of the implications. What Eok told me about Lena being one of the leaders, her wearing a tracker and Vader's threatening to kill her to keep James in line. All of it points towards the siblings being forced to work under this dictator. I'm not sure how they ended up in that situation, but Veritas seems to, be, he seems to keep James under control by using Lena. Which means if Lena was safe, perhaps James could... No, no, that seems rather silly. I haven't seen anything to indicate he's secretly a knight of justice and would do the right thing. That man is still cunning and evil. Just because he saved my life doesn't mean his sins are forgiven. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't try to convince him. Veritas mentioned he'd come to Earth himself if James failed, and I definitely see him falling, failing here. Which means we could use his help against Veritas. He has a lot of inside information, of course. The second time I'm calling to James' quarters, I immediately question him. Have you given it some thought? I asked when he pulls out the syringe to administer medicine. Ugh. James' eyes glaze over. Princess, silence. I need to concentrate. But uh, I yell out in pain. He nicked me quite hard. I told you to stay quiet, James sighs and tucks my arm. I haven't shut up long enough for him to prick me again and give me the medicine. You could join us, you know, I whisper. James runs his fingers through his hair, pushing it away from his eyes as he cleans up the puncture wound, ignoring what I'm saying. We have so many superheroes that are strong and capable. They'll put up a good fight against Lord Veritas. With bored eyes, James releases my arms. He doesn't seem interested in what I have to say and can't be bothered to tell me to shut up huh? either. So Fario, your Pete's in this strange accent. I caught his entrance. Superhero. Wait, what? Is that what he was saying? So, so Fario or whatever, bro. <laughs> I realize the word is not being translated by the device in our ears. That's what we call the people with unique abilities that fight for justice. And just like that, I've lost his interest. As he goes to clean up the syringe and places it back into the bowl. Uh. Go back to your chambers, princess. Fine, I'll keep trying. This time, James remains seated in his chair as he beckons me over. Mm. Your arm, princess. James asks for me. I extend my left arm to him. This will be the third shot. So this will be nine days so far? James notices something. I follow his line of sight. The air he previously nicked has a bruise formed. The skin surrounding it has turned a rather deep purple. Huh? What is that? He asks. I rub over the spot. Nothing. Just a bruise from when you gave me the previous shot. James leans back in his chair, eyes focused on the bruise. On my bruise. It's really nothing serious. People get small bruises from shots all the time. Ugh. First, the wound you sustained from well over a noon ago. And now this. Earthlings are too fragile, he says, brushing away his hair from his face. I feel like I'm going to give him a haircut or something. Because it's constantly mentioning his hair. I've heard that one before. Compared to you, maybe. I reply, now ready to get into another argument again. How's your back? I find myself asking despite knowing the answer. I expect him to say it's none of my business or that I should shut up. Or any numbers outbursts from him. But I'm surprised when Jane reaches out and curls his fingers around my right arm instead, tugging me closer to him. My back is fine. He answers in an unusual soft voice, not taking his gaze off my arm. Rahul has accelerated healing, unlike your race. I know, you told me already. His thumb presses down on my skin and touches very light, as if he thinks I should shatter if he exerts more pressure. He's even using my other arm to administer a shot. Perhaps he's finally realizing the difference between us. I wouldn't say I'm fragile, but I guess when compared to someone who heals up holes in their bodies within a day, yeah, I look quite frail. Maybe that's why he's being extra gentle with me. James pushes his hair away from his eyes. It's gotten so long, it keeps getting in its way. He scans my skin for skin, yeah, scans my skin for a vein, ready to insert the syringe. I can't help but stare at him in silence. So he tries to be gentle with his actions. This brute of a man who has caused me so much misery is actually showing me a caring side I didn't think he had. Well, I guess sacrificing himself to save my ass will count as caring. I never did thank him for that. He says his back is fine, but in that moment he must have experienced excruciating pain. Even if he recovered fast, no one should have to go through that, uh, through that in the first place. A lock of hair falls in front of his, own, his brown eyes again, obstructing his vision. No. We're not telling him to get a haircut. I don't want him to get a haircut. My hand moves on his own accord, fingers gliding across his forehead, pushing away the hair, tucking it behind his pointy ear. Kim a bit. I hope you didn't just stab me all incorrectly. His eyes fly wide open as he ro uh, and he rolls away on his chair. He stares at me in shock as if he's been stung by a V. I say, feeling awkward at his extreme reaction. Your hair was in the way, I mutter. Alright, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> James clears his throat, looking away and rolling back his chair into a normal position. That rattled him, but I'm not exactly sure why. He's usually very composed. I think, I think... I think James 
likes head strokes. Head strokes? Hair strokes? Running your fingers through his hair? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just stop moving before I hurt you again, he says with a grunt. Right, I agree, extending my left arm. This time I couldn't find the right moment to convince him not to attack Earth. He kinda cute, I guess. I'm so damn bored being locked up. How long ca do I have to endure this? Yolk visits me to learn my meal for the day. Yolk exclaimed happily. Uh. Princess, here are your provisions, he says politely. It's still a little weird to it's still a little weird to me now that he doesn't speak in that funny way anymore. Yolk, how much longer until you arrive? I'm going mad staying here all locked up. Yolk pauses for a moment trying to uh. think. I believe we'll arrive in roughly twenty more days. Twenty I groan, it already feels like it's been ages. Yolk looks apologetic. Uh. I'm sorry, I can't do much. Captain is adamant you stay locked up this time. He says you have a knack for causing trouble. I huff. He's not wrong, though. Yoke, is there anyone else on the ship that belongs to the resistance? I ask him. If more people are on Yoke's side, my chances of escaping grow larger. Alas, Yoke shakes his head. Uh. Just me on the ship. What about Captain Caleb? Uh. Captain Caleb is probably the most loyal to Lord Veritas, Yoke sighs. I recall Caleb at the Malka vessel looking for Veritas. Right, I remember he said he, was, he always gave his moquette to Lord Veritas. I've been trying to convince Captain James to give up on his attack and peacefully surrender, I say. Yoke looks flabbergasted. Uh. You, you're negotiating with a captain. Is that a bad thing? Uh. No, he looks unsure. He's listening. I pout. Not really. He tells me to shut up, but it's worth a shot. I'd much rather he not go to war with my planet at all. I don't want you to die either. <laughs> he chuckles slightly. I'm not about to die just like that. This time will be different, Princess. <sighs> not only does the captain intend to use you in a deal, but we've brought along our strongest ship and more men. So there will be an even bigger bloodbath, I ask horrified. The oak sprouts lower, confirming my uh. suspicion. I can't predict how it will really go down, but I will try to get you off the ship before the fighting starts. That worries uh. me. Princess, do you have a way to contact the people who will keep you safe as soon as we land? That's a good question. My phone is deader than a potato. It won't even boot up anymore, let alone make a phone call. I don't have a way to contact anyone right away. However, we'll be met with an envoy, and I'm sure they'll recognize me. My face should have been plastered all across the news. The human that got kidnapped by aliens. That's got to make for a juicy headline. Not to mention I still know many superheroes as a client. They recognize me and take me to safety. Kane better. She. <laughs> mm. Princess, Jean's voice flies for my attention. What is it? Mm. I smell blood. His eyes. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> His eyes travel down towards my legs. Oh, for God's sake. As I've told you before, it's a female human thing, I say. Yes, I'm once more on my period. This time I'm a little more prepared because Eo got me some pieces of cloth I could use. It still sucks being on my period out in space, though. I can't even clean myself properly. I must smell even worse than I usually mm. do. The mysterious bleeding of the earthling race has got me puzzled. What a strange defect. <laughs> Stop it! Defect in your evolution, Lonnie, muttered sagely. Um, it's not a defect, it's normal. I remind him. Must he always act so pompous about huh. humans? You and I have a strange definition of normal, he says, quirking an eyebrow. Uh. Will you bleed to death before you even arrive? Of course not, I say. It will go away on its own. It hurts a little and it's uncomfortable, but I've had this since I was young. I will go look at the floor. You don't need to worry about me. His head snaps up at me, eyes blaze. Huh. Who says I'm worried, he argues, offended. Well, if you're not, then please stop interrogating me about my period, I reply softly. Huh? Something doesn't translate. Period, he repeats. Oh, it's the name of my condition, I guess. I'm having my period. It's on a monthly cycle. A month is a little more than a noon, and I think. Uh, James begins to growl. Uh, Quiet, I didn't require you to be here so you could lecture me about your earthly business. Just give me your arm. Alright, he's back to normal, guys. I huff and then extend my arm. So childish. He's the one that got confused when I mentioned the word period. James reaches for my arms, focusing his gaze. Uh, look, your right arm is also bruised. I look down the right, uh, the, at the inside of my right arm. There's a blue spot where I've been shot before. Now both my arms are bruised. I'll totally be honest. I haven't even noticed until now. No matter how careful I am with the injections, your skin is still bruised and he states in a frustrated manner. What is he actually worried about hurting me? I can't stop the amused grin from creeping up on my face. I have my doubts whether you'll be able to survive this treatment, he admits. Don't be ridiculous. You're only giving me injections. This is normal, I answer. He acts as if my arms will fall off at any uh, at moment's notice. This is not normal, he says gruffly. Almost insulted that I suggested otherwise. Bruises, wounds, gashes. I've seen it all. It is my daily life. His fingers flutter across the sore spot on my arm. Never have I seen a species bleed involuntarily or turn different colors just because they were pricked with a needle. 
I guess it must be hard for you to re re reconcile, reconcile. Uh, I don't know. The fact that other species don't just heal up their wounds within a day. Huh. James huff simply huffs. This time, not responding. He looks a little unsure on how to proceed. Go on. I can still take it. I'm not going to break. <laughs> You better be right, he says, brushing away his hair from his eyes and sticks the needle in my arm. It's still not too late to end this on peaceful terms, I say out loud. Every single time, I try and convince him to change his plans. Oh. You're a, ver a very stubborn creature, he groans. Go back to your chambers. Fine, but I won't give up. James cleans away any blood from my arm and clears his desk with equipment before a soldier takes me to my room. Weeks have pa since passed, and when I'm called to meet up with James in his quarters again, I'm excited when I walk past the window. I squish my face up against the glass. Earth! I can see Earth! We're almost home. At least I can almost see it. <laughs> mm. Today will be your last shot, James mentions, already having everything prepared. The inside of my arms are purple and blue from all the injections I've received these past few weeks. Shouldn't they have been gone by now? Wait. I lied. <laughs> I also have a bruise on my arm that I don't know where it came from and it's been chilling. <laughs> the inside of my arms are purple and blue from all injections I've received these past few weeks. At least the wound I've gotten for Kale peeled up, though it has turned into a scar. Are we landing soon? I saw Earth from the window. I stay excitedly, surprising James with my good mood. Mm. Yes, we shall be arriving soon at our destination. James' fingers curl around my wrist and he twists my arm around to inspect my skin. It's scarring, he says, referring to the wound I received during the flogging. Yes, well, it's a given for me. It should fade from red to white in a few years, and you'll, you're barely able to tell, I say optimistically. A few years? If I had to see that scar for a few years, I, it would be so hard to forget this traumatizing memory here. <laughs> the tip of his fingernails, the finger trails the scar. It's a very light touch. It doesn't hurt or feel mm. bad. It's the same, he murmurs quietly. I raise my eyebrows. Same. <laughs> A defensive wound, he says, and then he raises his ar own left arm, rolling up his sleeve to show me a scar. It takes me a second to realize what he's doing, why he's doing this. It's the same type of scar as mine, though he's got two lines, as if he were slashed with a claw. A defensive wound, he said. I raised my arm to protect him. Did James have to protect someone or himself? He must have blocked an attack when he was younger, or received flogging. If his scarred, if it, if his scarred back is in a any I can't read anymore. Any indication his early life must have been very rough on him. We can still negotiate peacefully, I say quietly, to change your plan to not attack Earth. We can help each other. Oh. Still have that idea in your mind. You never give up, do you? He asks as he rolls up his he rolls his sleeve back into position. I've been told I'm stubborn, I grin at him. Mm. And you have the nerve to keep challenging me. Must be in my blood, I say with a oh. shrug. I'm surprised you still have any left after that horrible period of yours, he quips. <laughs> <laughs> James, why are you suddenly so cute all of a sudden? What the fuck? <laughs> I can't help but laugh, ca causing James to still. Briefly, he looks confused, worried if he said something funny. You sound way too chipper despite your predicament. Well, he doesn't realize I have plans to escape. I'm just happy to be home again, I say, which isn't a lie. Wouldn't you be happy to return to your home again? James silently fills up the syringe with the medicine. My home plan doesn't exist anymore, he says, his fingers coiling around my arm. Mine's whining slightly. That's the first time he ever confirmed he has a home planet. Even the shot doesn't disturb you from my th my thoughts. He doesn't have a home planet anymore. What does that mean? Are you the last of your kind? I find myself asking. James removes his syringe from my arm, not so worried. Alright, good thing that was done with, or else that would have been terrible. The entire room shakes and echoes with a loud metal sound. Alarms blare throughout the quarters. I've been caught off guard nearly tripping over my feet. It's James who keeps me upright. The device on his desk lights up. Captain, voice yells. James immediately walks towards his desk to respond. Speak, what's, what was the explosion? Ajax 108 has fighter missile at us. It's much stronger than our shield can take. It's much stronger than your shield can take. I thought this was the best ship you guys got. Earth is shooting at us, I screech. But I'm on the ship too. Why are they trying to take us down straight away? Can we run more power to our shield? James asks, trying to calm, stay calm. But I can hear the sense of urgency in his voice. We used up most of the shield's powers with the impact, we, uh, with the impact just now. We can't take another direct hit. Uh. Future mother's no- That's a weird saying for you, dude. There's a blast. Alright. Well, I don't think Earth will want another attack like that, so obviously they don't care who's on the ship. I'm unable to tell what's going on. I'm floating in the silent, in the silent debris. I can see the stars, the Earth, everything is spinning. There's no oxygen, no air. I can't breathe. The room has been obliviated. 
The room? I am out in fucking spice? Should my hair grow a little longer if his grew longer? It's very pretty though. James hovers out in front of me, eyes open, still conscious. He's unable to move, much like I am. We're simply left to our own devices in space. The liquid of my eyes start to evaporate, drying them out. Instantly, I shoot out a piece of thread towards what's left of the ship, hooking it around a metal bar. I fling out, fling out my other arm towards James, who, who uh, yeah. I fling out my other arm towards James and shoot one more thread. The thread spirals towards James, who sees it. Grab it! I'm starting to lose vision. He reaches for it, grabbing hold of it. I tug, it, tug on it hard, reeling him towards myself. It, more like, it looks like I'm, he's pulling me, I don't know. Once close enough, James wraps an arm around my waist, holding onto my entire body. He, I literally thought we had the best ship. What, is, what the fuck? He gra grabs the other end of my thread and yanks on it, propelling us back towards the ship. I'm losing consciousness. It's so hard to stay awake. It's all, it all goes dark. Flurry of footsteps echo around me in the darkness. Why is she still unconscious? I hear a very agitated Jane's rage. I find it hard to move or even open my eyes. My eyes are so dry, I feel extremely bloated too. I notice there's some kind of mask on my face, supplanting me with uh. oxygen. Earthling can't take outer space very well, says another deep voice. Yeah, I, I know. Humans cannot last out there. Genius observation made oh. there. HX 108 has stopped firing missiles at us. Th that voice belongs to yeah. We're losing so much pressure, we need to enter orbit and ah. land. Prepare the landing. P prepare for a landing, James barks loudly. Make sure the princess stays alive. All this yelling is giving me a huge headache. It hurts. There's some more frantic running around. With someone else tending to me. Then soon I'm lifted in someone's <sighs> arms. We're going, Eve whispers. Is he taking me away? It's so hard to open my eyes. It either doze off. Next thing I know, I can feel the vibrations of the machine. I hear explosions uh. as well. It's hard to navigate the missiles, Eok says, concern rising in his voice. Suddenly, I feel my stomach turn as the machine we're in does a loop. As, are we in one of those drones? Ah. Brace yourself! Oh my god, planet Earth! Eok carries me outside, the fresh air fills up my lungs. I feel reju rejuvenated enough to find the crack with my eyes. The sunlight nearly blinds me, I'm so sensitive to the light. Eok, hurry! I say, straining my eyes to see. Hmm. We're on your planet, he confirms. Uh. Princess, can you walk? I can try. He gently lowers me onto the ground. I feel bloated still, but I have enough strength to keep upright. When my eyes have finally adjusted, I can see that the spaceship is hanging above the city in the sky. Drones are flying everywhere. They're attacking. Superheroes are gathered around and launching a counterattack. So much for any negotiations. Where are we anyway? I think we landed in some park. Oh, I know this park. A sudden yell alerts us. Nah. You vile creature! <laughs> Yo gets knocked on the ground and able to react at all. A superhero's on top of him, de de delivering blows to his face. Uh, the the pull, pull away. Rage overcomes me and I immediately conjure out two threads from my fingertips. They wrap around the superhero's wrist to prevent him from punching Eok anymore. I then yank on the thread to stop, cause him to topple off Eok, who hurriedly gets up from the ground. Uh. Thanks, princess. He says, quickly rushing to my side. Stop, I tell the superhero. Why are you interfering? Why are you trying to protect this alien? The superhero asked, dumbfounded. He's not the enemy. Huh. Do you need to get your eyes checked, lady? He's one of those aliens that came from the ship. Just don't touch him, I threaten my jaw clench um. tight. Princess, I can see the drone leave, he suggests quietly. Horror watches over me when I notice someone flying in the sky, coming towards us in rapid fashion. I can see quite clear that it's James. He found us as if pointing at the sky. How did he No, I snatch a tracker from my arm and throw it on the ground, stomping on it. I forgot. Ah, uh, how awkward. The both of them turn around to look, look behind them, just in time for James to land in front of me. <gasps> Another alien exclaims the superhero. The superhero tries to charge and attack, his face extended, but James backhands him into- <laughs> He just backhands him into the nearest tree. I scream surprised at his strength. What is the meaning of this? James roars, directing his wrath towards Eok. Eok's brows droop in fear. He's trapped in a corner. Leave him out of this, I say, stepping in front of James. James roughly grabs my wrist, hoisting it up in the air. Conspiring, he glares at Eok. You convinced him to help you. The treacherous filth. I would dis- Kane! It's Kane! It has to be Kane, right? I'm blown aside, unable to tell what is up and what is down. You fucker! Don't touch her! Oh my god. <laughs> my eyes fly wide open, that voice, that profanity. Kane! <laughs> Not even Kane route, and I'm hyping for Kane. He's here. You throw a lightning bullet at James, who's not staggering away. Oh my god, Super Saiyan mode. Hello? Hair crackling in a bright yellow green. It's rare I get to see him in his full superhero getup. Ah, oh, this is his outfit? 
How did you find me? I want to throw my arms around him, but we have more pressing matters to attend to. Careful, he warns me. King could use a ball of electricity in the palm of his hand. Clearly targeting at you at this time. No! I cried, jumping in between them. Don't hurt him! The fuck did you go? <laughs> listen, I know it was weird, but like, listen. <laughs> King Algar lowers his arm. <gasps> Unfortunately, now that he's distracted, James launches a counterattack to annoy Punch of Kane's stomach. He goes flying across the grass in a screaming shock. Alright, well, I'm just in the way. Eh? Princess, watch out! Yoke warns me, clutching my arm and preventing me from checking on King. Ah! King this is multiple pieces of lightning from his butt. They're surging around him, crackling loudly, ready to strike. He shoots one bullet at James who dodges it by flying upwards. Just in time for me to see Caleb flying towards us. Ah! Captain Caleb found us. I don't think we can. Yoke is cut off when Caleb lands on the grass. He easily phases in front of us, ready to fight alongside James. Kane, watch out! I scream. I know how powerful both these captains are. Nobody can, can handle them on his own. Kale flies towards Kane, but Kane keeps him at a distance with another bolt of lightning, which sizzles across the grass, leaving scorch marks. Uh! Captain Caleb, beware of the lightning! James hollers at him. Huh. Mind your own business. This small fry is mine. How is he yours? You're kill stealing! <laughs> Kale grants maniac. Ma maniacally? He lost his control again. James appears in front of Kane, ready to punch, but Kane sends a flurry of lightning bolts from his body, making him roll out of the way. Uh. Grab the princess, James commands. Caleb's, Caleb's cold blue eyes land on me, and I freeze up. He's not in control. I don't know what it'll do to me. Caleb launches himself towards me, speeding, flying at high speed, but before he's able to reach me, Eok jumps in the way. Uh. Caught off guard, Eok uses this opportunity to kick him away from me, and Caleb stumbles across the ground. Uh. Or grass. What do you think you're doing? He yells at Eo. He assumes his fighting position. He doesn't say a word. In the background, King continues to throw lightning bolts at James, and who is forced to dance around the lightning to avoid getting hit. Nah. Oh man, the two baddies are fighting each other. Captain Caleb, grab the princess and retreat! James barks at him, repeating his order. Hey, you assholes, I'm your opponent! King yells out loud before shooting a beam of lightning at James. James dodges it immediately, cursing his under his breath. I'm so amazed that Kane is holding his ground. Lightning definitely seems to be their weak spot, and James remembers this from the last time. One good hit and he's out. Irritated that Yoke interfere, Caleb turns his attention to him instead. He punches him in the stomach, causing him to fly backwards, skidding across the grass. Uh, I'm not gonna try to scream too much. I shrieked concerned for him. I rushed towards, over towards him. The princess is mine, Caleb yells, flying towards me. I said don't touch her! Kane fires a strong lightning bolt towards Caleb, who's unable to dodge. There's a lot going on here. Uh, excuse me? James flies in front of the bolt and takes the full burnt, uh, brunt of it, preventing it from hitting- Fuck! James, come on! Let Caleb get hit! His iron burns to a crisp and he immediately collapsed on the ground completely fried. <gasps> Captain James, Caleb's ass, shocked at the sudden attack. James cracks his eyes open, his skin is scorched with burns, much like the first time I met him. It seems he can't move around at all. King God direct hit on him. <sighs> Retreat, James Hees. Protect Lena. Caleb looks at us, phasing back to normal. He's confused. I'm confused. Um, but he argues. <gasps> Go! That is an order, James hollers. Caleb gulps and then launches himself into the sky, zooming away. Kane advances on James, who is barely holding on to consciousness. He readies a ball of light in his hand, saying there and moving it's it, it's not Kane. James looks at. It's me. Oh no. There's a sorrowful expression on his face, and it's not due to the physical pain he's in. Uh. You. You have no idea what you have done. He has uh. discomfort. Where Veritas is going to destroy us all. He steps in front of my view, raising his arms as a prayer to strike. <laughs> End of the line, you motherfucker. <laughs> I forget how much of a potty mouth Kane is. Kane spits out. No, he's about to kill him. I go as fast as my feet can take me, slipping across the grass. My heartbeat is going out of control. I shoot a thread that catches Kane's wrist, and I pull, I pull on it just fast enough for him to change trajectory and miss his lightning bolt. It hits the ground next to James instead. I rush to myself. I, I rush to put myself between both of them, spreading out my arms. Don't kill on my pant. Um. Chico, what are you doing? It's not a threat anymore. Don't finish it, please. Behind me, James has already lost consciousness from taking a direct hit from Kane's lightning. He's held on for a surprising long time. My spread, my spread arms start to succumb to my emotions and I falter in front of Kane. Kane, I sit with a hiccup, my arms landing on his chest. Kane, I repeat, tear, tears welling up in my eyes. <laughs> Kane, you're so hot! Why are we- Why, why is 
is this James route? How is this James route? When am I falling in love with him? I, I can't tell when. <sighs> Kane's hair turns back to her and without hesitation, he pulls me into an embrace. I'm hallway stiff, my tears straight staining his suit. Took you fucking long enough, Kane grunts, his own tears spilling onto my cheek. Kane! This is not a Kane route, but we're getting Kane! James, you might have to just be bottom tier. I'm very sorry. Like... Sorry, bro. You're not... I don't know how you're gonna redeem yourself in the 11 chapters. But... As it still stands. Dimitri, Neil, Kane, and... James. I feel like Kane should be a little bit higher up. But, I mean, technically he will be whenever we get to... Re um... Finish... Whenever the, uh, Grays... Aiden or Aiden and e Eok. Wait, 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 wait! Eok! <laughs> oh, wait a second! Is this the same Eok as the one in James route? What? Nah, it can't be. Anyway, I don't know. Hmm. 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 Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.